Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to the last podcast of Unit 4. I believe this is Four Point Trace. That's three for those of you who uh, didn't know better. So what we're going to do here is just look at images and relate those images to the characteristics of different types of bonding and introduce one new type of bonding. So metallic, the key to metallic bonds are there are free moving electrons. That's kind of the answer to most every question. Why are metals malleable? So I take the hammer of Thor and it shifts. Do you see how these electrons move around? And they're still attract, these electrons are moving around and they're still attracting them to the mass of it. Okay, why? Because the electrons are free moving. Why does it conduct electricity? Electricity is the flow of ions and guess what my friends there's free moving electrons and electrons are charged right how does coulomb's law affect it um basically the biggest effect is going to be the size so remember on the periodic table as you go down it's bigger as you go left it's bigger Okay. Charges, basically we're talking about the charges of the nucleus and um, the electrons, and those are pretty comparable. Okay. Another representation is a swarm of delocalized electrons. Another representation is electrons kind of, so you should be comfortable with that. Another one is electrons where if I said, look at this electron right here, or those electrons right there. Can you tell specifically whether it belongs to this guy or this guy or this guy? Or th you can't really. So that's the part that we're going to get. That's type one. Hey. Type two, covalent. Okay. Why are intermolecular forces so important? Covalent forms molecules with a beginning and end. End. Beginning and end. So... Remember, I show water's Mickey Mouse, and there's the beginning and end of a water molecule, right? And here's the beginning and end of another water molecule. And the attraction is between those two. Okay. Why is it weaker? Coulomb's law, right? Um, there are um, weakest charges. Whoa, I just misspelled weakest. I'm going to pretend that didn't happen. Weakest charges, weakest cues. Okay, and that's why it's weaker. Why does it never conduct? There are no ions. Now, I found this adorable thing diving through Google Image a few years ago. Sarah, I'm cold. Oh, sorry, it was Emily. I'm cold, Sarah. I'm cold, too. They share the blanket. Wow, we both feel so cozy and comfortable after sharing a blanket. See how this water is? They're sharing these electrons, and they're sharing these electrons. Intermolecular forces, this should seem very familiar to you, because it was on your last test, intramolecular forces, which in this case would be covalent. Okay. All right. Okay, we've got another kind of covalent bonding that we haven't talked about yet. It's called network covalent bonding. It needs to have, it has carbon or silicon to have four bonds. Whoops. So if I look at this, you see how this carbon has one, two, three, and then it's got a backdoor bond, okay? Four bonds. So why is it so strong? Bond angles are large and number of bonds are many. Why is it brittle? Bonds don't reform easily. Remember, the only thing malleable is metallic bonds. And metallic bonds are malleable because the electrons are free to flow and reform bonds. Okay. Why does it never conduct? No ions. Okay. So there's diamond. So this is the this is the strongest, strongest of all of the bonds. And it's basically diamond and quartz, which is what sand is made out of. If you don't believe me that sand is strong, my challenge for you that we've talked about before is take a whole handful of sand and try and chew on it and see what survives. Your teeth are the sand. 
Don't do it. Your teeth will fail. Good. Ionic bonding. I think that's the last one. Strong bonds. Full ions. Locked in place. As a solid. As a solid. Coulomb's law applies how? Q's large size periodic table. Why does it conduct as a liquid? Ions can flow. Why does it conduct as aqueous? Ions can flow. Why doesn't it conduct as a solid? Ions locked in place. Why is it brittle? Again, so when we talk about brittle, we talk about how bonds don't reform. And you might think, well, you know what? If I just shifted these guys over a little bit and moved them over, I don't know, three, four, or five, um, that's a very simplistic view. Because right now we have an up and a down axis, right, like a Y axis. And we have like a Z axis too. But remember, if I hit it with a hammer, it's going to spin too. So if I have this plate and I have another plate on top of it, if I spin it, the likelihood of it changing, oh, man, look at really bad artwork. The likelihood of it being aligned perfectly is very low. So the bonds don't reform easily. And the reason for that is because um, like charges repel. So if I start with plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, and I have minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, if I doubt this will work the way I want it to, oh, and it's not. Um, if I shifted it, I'll change my color to do the big shift, and I shifted one over and I made it um, plus, minus, plus, minus. Do you see how the repulsion that's right here? This is repelling. Repel. Ah, and that means you're going to separate. And why is it repelling? Because they're like charges. And these are just different representations of ionic compounds. Notice how you always see positives and negatives. Okay. Um, how do these form? See how sodium had one valence electron? And it gave it, it transferred it to chlorine that had seven. I had seven. I had one. And then eight inside. So what happens is I end up with eight inside and eight outside. And that is full. Full is yay. Yay, full. Mmm, full. And then the other part is um, I have a positive and a negative, and those are Q's, baby. Q! That's it. See that Q? I see it, too, which I will say toodles. Adios.